that's where the mind misinterprets. He says, ah, I'm not supposed to have an expectation. Or, the natural state of being is resistance-free, reaction-free, and judgment-free. So now the mind say, well, I'm not supposed to judge. That's a judgment itself. So it reacts, and now it is reacting to the reaction. I'm not supposed to react. So it perpetuates the reaction. It resists, and now it is judging itself by resisting, which means perpetuates the resisting. Yet, the knowledge comes and points. It's not something that you do not to judge. It's not something that you do not resisting. It's not something that you do not reacting. Is as you see the defect of this reactivity, this defect of the judgment, if this defect of this resistance, that seeing transforms it. That seeing takes the energy out, out of it. So people instead of say, I don't want it, I shared yesterday, I'm interested to witness it. I'm interested that it will come into the light and be seen. Therefore, the object does not sense it. It's only the mind that senses it. Otherwise, the work would not work. That's right. It's only the mind. It's and only awareness mind. witnesses it all. Yeah. So now, we, we were reading the last, up to now we got to the fifth sloka. This consciousness does neither rise nor set. It does not increase nor does it suffer decay. Being self-luminous, it illuminates everything else without any other aid. So, being self-luminous, that means it illuminates itself by itself, right? And it illumines everything else without any other aid. That means it is the source of light, of illumination. So you can call that eternal? Let's see. Consciousness does neither rise nor set. That means it has no beginning, no end. Good. So now I can discriminate. Anything that has a beginning and an end, it's not consciousness. So the body is born and dies, it is not, it has, it is not consciousness. The, mi the mind appears and disappears, thoughts appear and disappear, come and go. So thoughts cannot be consciousness. Consciousness does neither rise nor set. It does not increase nor does it suffer decay. If it does not increase and doesn't suffer decay, that means it is changeless. So anything that changes is not consciousness. Now we come into discrimination. Not this. Okay, so the thoughts. I, I think I am the one who's thinking. Thoughts is movement. Undergo change. I'm not these thoughts. The body is getting older. Decay. I'm not this body. So you cannot use the word, just a label, you cannot use the word permanent? You can? You can. For yeah. what? Consciousness. Yeah. It's, it's not a label, it's another label. It's, it's, a, it's a thought yeah. pointing to yourself. Okay. So, if I will hold on, I am eternal, mm -hmm. you will never suffer. So let's say you say, my body is going through, I'm not this body because it's undergo change, I am eternal, mm -hmm. changeless. I'll focus my attention on this kind of thought. When you focus enough on this kind of thought, there would be a moment that eternity as yourself will shine through and will reveal itself. Not as the thought I am eternal, as the direct experience of changeless awareness. The mind does not know what is eternity because it is impermanent. Yeah? It is uh, fleeting in nature. It has a beginning and an end. It cannot know that which is eternal. So now he comes and points, being self-luminous, that means eternity can know itself. Eternity knows itself. 
because it's self-luminous. You can only know itself. Yes. And I am that eternity. So that's really a phenomenal sort of a barometer or measuring stick is if it's changing, it's not me. That's right. This is discrimination. So easy, so so simple, huh? Yeah, and clear because it's it's so clear because anything that undergoes change is not you. That which is changeless knows itself by itself. Mm. It is you. Mm. You can never lose you because it is changeless. Mm Anything that undergoes change, it comes and goes. So one can think, I gained, I've lost, I've lost, I gain. It, it alternates. It's pleasure, it's pain. Because pleasure is gain. And pain is loss in the mind. Because pleasure I like. And pain I dislike. Gain I like. Loss I don't like. And what drives the ego, the personality, the as- that aspect of the mind, is gaining. It's all about gaining and not losing. So the personality, the ego, hates to lose. So the game is, the game is in the mind. The mind is the game. The game? Game, you know, game. like a football game. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, because it's always changing. That's right. That's why, that's why mm. it's... It's not reliable because one moment it labels it good, the next moment the same thing it labels it bad. I used to give the example of you want a really nice shoe, okay? And you see these shoes and you like, you buy these shoes, you're so happy, you say, it's so good I bought these shoes. You slip them on your foot and you start walking for about half a mile and it starts rubbing you and it's rubbing the skin and it creates a blister and you say wow this shoe is really bad and then there would be all kind of things it is killing me it is awful how can i get rid so how is it possible that the same object that was good turned to be bad because it's not the object it's your interpretation of what is perceived through the senses about the object. Mm. And because the interpretation is not constant, it's not constant, it's changing. One moment I like, the next moment I don't like. One moment I like, and the same thing the moment later that I like, I don't like anymore. So it's alternating. So like and dislike, they follow each other and they cancel each other. So when I like, all I perceive is the liking, that's my world. When I dislike and it reversed, all I perceive is the dislike, I don't see the liking. So that's my world. So now I, my world is unstable, changing, is unreliable. So then I say I'm insane. When, insane. And, and yeah, in, and it is insanity, yet collectively, Everybody are almost in, in this insanity, so we agree that this is sanity. When in fact, sanity is when you experience yourself as changeless awareness. And changeless awareness is not dead. It is full of vibra- vi- um, vibration. It's vibrant and alive. It is a conscious entity. It's not dead. Actually, If consciousness was dead, there wouldn't be any life. Because what creates life is the power from consciousness. So people say consciousness is dead. No, that's your interpretation from the mind perspective. It's like if consciousness was nothing, how from nothing everything is created and if we are not sure what is created, open your senses and see what happens in the world and in the universe so much life that means it had to come from something that is real that is vibrant that has all the possibilities it has all the power it is the source of all power so when someone we come to the realization that consciousness 
which is the source, is nothing, he comes to this understanding mentally. He hasn't, his mind hasn't been dwelling enough within the only reality, which is consciousness. This is why the sages, they point that there is only one single reality, and that's consciousness. All the rest is unreal. Coming to this statement, it's quite bold. It's quite bold because they point that there is only one reality, which is consciousness, which is yourself, which is changeless awareness. Consciousness alone is. Yeah, consciousness alone is. Consciousness alone is real. Consciousness alone exists. We have interpretation of it mentally, yet consciousness cannot be understood mentally. It can only be experienced directly as being consciousness itself. This is where I say, this is really deep if someone would really understand where the sages, all the sages throughout all centuries, what are they pointing to? It's like, bring the mind back to the reality, the only reality. All the rest, you're just dreaming it up. It's not even real. It doesn't even exist. Doesn't exist? Yes, they point that the only, the only reality exists as existence, consciousness, bliss, which he later opens in the seer and the seen. So this is quite bold, yet what one start to realize when they go into the scripture, scriptures that are ancient, all the sages realized the same, expressed it in different words, in different pointers. They all claim and say there is only one single reality and it's non-dual and it alone exists and it doesn't even have any room because it permeates everything. It doesn't go give any room for anything else to exist. Reality yes. is changeless. That means it's everywhere because it has no beginning or an end. Yes. Anything that changes starts and ends, right? Yes. So if it's, it permeates everything and it is single, changeless, it doesn't give a room for any other. So, and there is no other. So the goal is to recognize that within. Is the goal is for the mind to abide in yourself as the ultimate reality. Because so that's mind. where the certain understanding cannot proceed in the mind. Yeah. This is why in, in the Shankacharya, in the first sloka, he pointed. So he says, for um, I bow to Govinda, whose nature is bliss supreme, who can be known only from the import, import of all knowledge, which is Vedanta, in that terms he is calling. And it, and it is beyond the reach of speech and mind. That means the mind can enter up to that point. Then, that's it. It's, it's like, yeah. that's points that false identification, mm. he cannot enter the gate to heaven, to reality. So they called it heaven, yeah. they called it the different names, yet it is the only reality. And what's amazing is this is who one truly is. It's like you're not going to gain yourself. You are already it. Yeah. All, the no, all the false notion that you're separate from it has to dissolve and get lost once and for all in it in yourself means I as awareness consumes the whole mind eat it eat it up